Okay, in this video, I would like to show you a feature that I have added uh, to Blender over the course of the past two weeks called Geometry as Code. All right, so here's Blender. This is the default scene. I'm going to start by re rearranging the, the UI a little bit by uh, opening the Geometry Node Editor. I'm going to grab my default cube and add a new node geometry modifier. All right, it should actually show up in here. There it is. Okay. We don't really care about the cube, so I'm going to destroy the group input. And instead, I'm going to add a node called geometry as code, which you can find in the mesh primitive submenu of the node geometry editor. Here it is. So this node is very simple. It only produces a mesh. It has no input sockets and it takes a piece of text, either an internal text block or something that's in uh, an external file and basically produces uh, a mesh, right? It has to be code that uh, when executed produces geometry like uh, currently it, it relies on OpenSCAD uh, to do this. All right, so let me show you how this works. Uh, I'm going to split this in two in order to get a... Uh, right now there's no input, therefore there's no output. The, uh, you know, the node produces empty geometry when there's no input. So I have my geometry as code node. I am going to open a text editor here. I'm going to create a new text block. I'm going to call it thingy.scad. Note when I call it something.scad that the button here changes to uh, mimic this little refresh icon that you find in the node itself. Basically, these these are used to uh, force Blender to execute the code and force it to recompute the mesh. Uh, there's also a shortcut called Alt-U to do this without actually having to li leave the editor. All right, so we're all set. I'm going to do a very simple object. I'm going to create a sphere and then he'll I'm going to hit Alt-U or actually I can you know just press this button. Ah, yeah, I forgot to tell the node where to fetch the text. So here we go. Now I have plugged this text block into this node and you can see that uh, it has computed a sphere. So the language that I'm using in here is OpenSCAD. But as a matter of fact, uh, all the stuff I've written is, is somewhat independent uh, of the, you know, the underlying geometry engine. You could use anything that actually takes code as an input, executes it and produces a mesh. Uh, OpenSCAD is the most uh, popular one out there, but uh, there's others. All right, uh, so in OpenSCAD, if we want the sphere to be a little, bi a little bit more tessellated, we just specify this like this. And I'm gonna hit Alt-U this time, which is faster than navigating to the either this one or this one. All right. Um, I'm going to create a second sphere like this, but this time I'm going to stretch it a little bit. Um, stretch it by two in X and 0.5 in X in Y and Z. And if I hit Alt U, there you go. We now have essentially the union of an ellipsoid and a sphere. And now I'm going to ask OpenSCAN to compute the difference between these two things. All right, there we go. So OpenSCAN language is, is basically a, a general purpose, almost general purpose, uh, uh, programming language. It has, you know, all the standard paraphernalia of uh, programming languages. Uh, 
It has routines, it has recursion, it has for loops, uh, it has variables, you name it. Uh, so for example, I'm going to create a, the, the it's called a module in OpenSCAD language, but it's basically a, a routine called whole. And a whole basically returns the ellipsoid. All right. And here I'm going to say that I want a hole instead of this whole uh, line. Right, nothing changes except for the fact that now I'm going to take this hole and I'm going to create a second hole, but this time rotated by 90 degrees around the Z axis. Go. All right. Um, so this is the basic ID, right? Um, you have a, a, a path to essentially create geometry by writing code. It's really nice for a number of situations, uh, typically for creating uh, all kinds of parametric objects. It's also very nice because there is a large amount of uh, open sketch code out there on the internet. Uh, the, the three um, printing community as well as the maker community is uh, is using this tool a lot to produce objects. So if you need uh, anything that looks like a hard surface type of object, architectural or uh, or CAD-like, uh, you will likely find an OpenSCAD piece of code somewhere out there that does what you need, or if not, uh, that will do what you need by just tweaking a few parameters. All right, I don't want to dive too deep into OpenSCAD. This is not about OpenSCAD. This is about integrating OpenSCAD into, uh, into Blender. Um, one of the things that I've also added is uh, you should be able to work entirely within Blender to develop OpenSCAD model. And to that, uh, to that purpose, uh, the Geometry as Code node is a sort of aware of the text editors. For example, if I decide to add uh, a call to a non-existent object here, Right, OpenSCAD interprets this not as an error, but as a warning. When I ask OpenSCAD to basically execute, you basically see that number one, the node is in error or in warning to be exact. You see the warning message here, it says in line 10, there is a call to an unknown um, attribute. And the editor highlights the um, the line in red, or in light red because it's a warning. If you add um, an actual syntax error, this is what happens. OpenSCAD unfortunately uh, tells you that it sees the error at line 13 when it's a syntax error because this is where the, the grammar parser starts to uh, to go haywire. The actual error is on line 12, but anyway. Of course, you can uh, you can correct the problem by removing the syntax error and recompile, and then the warning is back. Let's kick that away as well. All right, um, there is not much feedback in terms of what's happening behind the scenes yet. Uh, the feedback happens in the you know in the shell if you launch Blender from the shell, but you can see that the um, when geometry is executed, let me set the two windows aside. Uh, for example, if I had the second hole, you get an idea of uh, what the node is doing in the background. So let me, for example, add the uh, second hole, like so. Yeah, that should do the job. Now you can see that uh, while it's executed, the thing it tells you, you know, what it's doing in the background. Uh, currently, it executes an external program, right? It, it creates a temp file, it uh, launches OpenSCAD on it, asks OpenSCAD to dump uh, uh, the mesh in a, f in a file, and it reads the file and produces a, a blend of mesh. This is not the most efficient thing. Uh, at some point, I will likely integrate the OpenSCAD uh, code as a library directly into Blender as an add-on, but for now, for sort of you know experimenting with the ID, it's uh, it's good enough. 
Um, yeah, there's there's a bare bone cache here. So for example, if I decide to add, uh, let's say, a decimate modifier after the geometry node, and um, in order to uh, you know do further transform. Um, the way Blender operates today, it very often recomputes everything, and uh, in particular, it re-execute open its CAD. So to prevent this, uh, I've added a, a tiny little cache. So the output of the node is actually uh, not recomputed. It, on it only recomputes the output of the node if the, um, if the source code changes. All right, that's the ID. Uh, there's a, at this point in time, uh, uh, a minor disadvantage, well, not minor, a disadvantage uh, to using this inside Blender as opposed to using it uh, directly in the OpenSCAD UI. Um, OpenSCAD has two modes. One mode where it recomputes the geometry using um, OpenGL CSG. So it doesn't really compute a mesh, it computes an image of the mesh, and it's fairly fast. So it allows you to sort of, you know, iterate and experiment with your code very quickly. And then once the model is ready, so to speak, you render it by actually asking OpenSCAD to compute the, the full uh, the full load geometry, uh, which is slower. Uh, currently, what I'm doing is asking uh, OpenSCAD to execute the code and actually compute geometry to feed it to Blender. So when when your object gets uh, a, a little complex, uh, it takes time. Uh, for example, if I decide to um, to crank up the, the resolution here to go, say, to um, 90. It's going to take a while here. It's the common runs. It's probably going to take on the order of a minute. Uh, whereas in if you were to do this in, uh, in OpenSCAD, it would be uh, a little bit faster. Um, I'm trying to figure out a way to actually bring the CSG rendering. Yeah, here you go. See, it took, uh, took 17 seconds to actually create the the final geometry. I'm working on figuring out a way to actually bring the, the OpenGL CSG rendering into, uh, into Blender directly, uh, but it's, it's not easy. But anyways, so this is, this is uh, the, the sort of a first, uh, first iteration, first attempt at integrating uh, uh, the OpenSCAD uh, uh, geometry as code engine into Blender. And, uh, oh yeah, one, fe one last feature I forgot. Uh, there's a small template here that you can basically, well, I've, I've only added one file right now, but you, you know, here's, a, here's a, an open sketch piece of code that creates a rounded box. So if we go here, rounded box, you should see a file rounded box at some point. There you go. And uh, again, this is fully parametric code, right? You you currently have this rounded box that has uh, uh, you know, uh, a bevel radius, for example, of 0.1. Let me make the bevel radius uh, uh, twice that, let's say, out to you. So the advantage of, of you know geometry of code is obviously parametric modeling. You write a piece of code that has parameters and arguments and whenever you need to adjust your object to to suit your needs all you got to do is change a few parameters which by the way that's another feature that I'm planning um, there's an interesting node in the in the shader world in blender called the uh, script shader which is capable of doing sort of somewhat the same thing um, as, as geometry as code it takes uh, you know an open shader language piece of source code and compiles it and executes it. And the nice thing is the node actually surfaces uh, all the inputs to the code as sockets. Uh, so you can then later manipulate your shader directly inside the, the shader editor without having to touch the code. Um, so I'm planning to do something similar where the geometry as code node will analyze the source code here, try to figure out uh, um, things like, you know, for example, this guy, and surface them as input sockets or input parameter in the node so you can, you know, basically manipulate your rounded box without having to touch the, the source code. But this is not implemented yet. It's, uh, I'm sort of new to the Blender code base, so uh, it's going to take a while for me to figure things out. All right. I 
don't think I've forgotten anything at this point. Yeah, that's a first overview. All right.